I was in high school, I started working in a movie theater, and that uh, got me into movies. I've always been kind of a movie nut. I went to movies in college. I saved up my money on the weekends, and I continued to like movies after I graduated from college. Uh, I, I liked independent movies especially, um, what are called indie movies now. And one day, uh, when I was living in Connecticut, I saw an advertisement for a movie called Therese. And something about it looked vaguely religious, uh, but I didn't really know much about what the movie was about. I went in, and it was the story of Therese of Lisieux. It's a movie by a man named Alain Cavalier. And it showed Therese of Lisieux in these very spare scenes. Therese as a young girl, Therese taking the religious habit uh, of a Carmelite sister, Therese in the novitiate, and Therese suffering and dying. At the end of the movie, I found myself in tears about this person I knew nothing about. And years later, when I entered the Jesuits, someone said, hey, do you know anything about Therese of Lisieux? And I thought, yeah, I, I saw a movie about her once. And I got interested in Therese and read her autobiography. She was born in 1873 um, of two very devout parents in a very religious uh, family. And she decides at age 15 that she's going to enter the Carmelite monastery. Well, that's too young for the Carmelites at the time, so she does what any uh, bold 15-year-old girl would do at the time, which would be to go with her father to visit Pope Leo XIII and ask for his permission. So when she's presented to Leo XIII, she kneels at his feet and says, basically, I want to enter the Carmelite monastery. And Leo says, in that wonderful way that popes have, you will enter if God wills it which is basically a non-answer. So the bishop at home finds out about her persistence and lets her enter early. So she enters the monastery at Lisieux, the Carmelite monastery, and she has a very typical life, nothing unusual. Uh, she goes through her novitiate. Um, she suffers the way that some people do in religious orders. She's very devout, and um, she dies very young. She dies of tuberculosis in her early 20s. But what happens is, uh, Halfway through her time uh, during her illness, one of the, the mother superiors asks her to write her autobiography. And so Therese writes this uh, book called um, The Story of a Springtime Flower. And uh, it initially, um, it's passed around among the Carmelite nuns, uh, and then it's passed to other Carmelite monasteries after her death. And it becomes this incredible uh, phenomenon, this um, kind of unknown person uh, becomes very well known, and she really is the most popular, I would say, modern saint there is. Therese of Lisieux, also called the Little Flower. Therese also, at the end of her life, did not see her job as complete. She said in her journal, After my death, I will spend my life in heaven doing good on earth, and I will let a shower of roses fall. And so the idea is that Therese wanted to intercede for all of us uh, after her death in heaven. And that's why when you go into churches today, if you see a statue of a Carmelite girl holding a bouquet of roses, that's just Therese of Lisieux. One of the interesting things that people don't know about Therese, who was this very faith-filled saint, is that towards the end of her life, uh, she struggled with feelings of despair over whether or not there was really a heaven, which is not very well known. And she pointedly told her sisters not to keep poison medicine near her bed, meaning uh, that she feared that she might uh, succumb and uh, you know try to kill herself. So as one biographer says, this is where Therese's life really intersects with our own. Because I think that so often we think that the saints had it made when it came to not having uh, sort of struggles with the spiritual life or uh, struggling with despair. But even someone like Therese of Lisieux, who was declared a doctor of the church, was someone who really struggled with um, doubts. Um, you know, and yet she persisted. She persisted in her faith all the way up until the end. And so I think to see Therese as kind of a pasteboard figure and someone who never struggled um, or had all the answers really does her a disservice. I think her faith um, shines out much more strongly when we understand the things that she struggled with towards the end of her life. But you think about it in terms of uh, Holy Saturday, for example. I think it, that darkness and prayer is like the example of the apostles on Holy Saturday. It's between the crucifixion and the resurrection where they're just kind of living on faith. And that's the way it is in our lives as well, too. I think that more of us feel that uh, you know our days are filled with dark than they are with uh, light. And um, I think when we look at someone like Therese, she can tell us to keep on going and really to persevere.
If you read the uh, story of a soul, Therese of Lisieux's autobiography, you're in for some shocks. She really defies a lot of expectations. For one thing, she says, if only I could be a priest, which is somewhat shocking for a lot of people. And this most Catholic of saints hated the rosary, which is not too strong a word to use. She said, the practice of the rosary for me is like an instrument of penance. And I think that shows us that we all don't have to have the same spirituality. The secret of Therese's spirituality, which is uh, contained in her book now called The Story of a Soul, is what she calls the little way. And the little way is basically doing small things for God with a lot of love. And so Therese really never saw herself as a great saint. She is a great saint, of course, but she never saw herself as that. She used to compare herself to the big Teresa, which would be Teresa of Avila, and say, I'm only little Teresa. But she would say that, you know, in God's garden, there are big flowers and little flowers, and not all of us can be big lilies and roses. Some of us have to be content to be little daisies. And God loves those little daisies just as much as he loves the big lilies and the big roses. The great thing about the little way is it's very accessible for people. Who hasn't felt little, in a sense? And who hasn't felt um, kind of uh, uh, belabored by things in our lives? And who hasn't suffered like Therese has? People feel that they can talk to Therese. They feel like she's a, a sister that they can talk to. I mean, literally a sister in religious life, but also a, a blood sister that she can talk to. And so this little way is very powerful. And I think Therese, this person who was really uh, expecting to be unknown for the rest of her life, is now known by millions. She can be found in uh, college chapels and uh, big cathedrals and in homes, statues, holy cards, paintings. And she's portrayed by a lot of people as this kind of cloying, girlish, sentimental, kind of sappy saint. Well, part of it is the, uh, the times that she grew up in. I mean, she grew up in a very sort of cosseted uh, French family. She was sort of spoiled. Uh, she was sort of very girlish, and you know, her writing is very cloying. But what shines through her writing, like a pale green shoot through earth, uh, is this message of love, 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 even when it's the most difficult. St. Therese in the, in the monastery would choose to sit next to the sister who she found the most disagreeable. St. Therese would choose not to respond when someone uh, made a disparaging remark about her. And so she shows us, I think, that one of the most difficult things to do, which is loving, loving our neighbors, loving our family sometimes, you know, is just as heroic as someone like Francis Xavier who traveled to the ends of the earth or one of the martyrs. And so this kind of martyrdom through love, which is very difficult and yet very freeing for a lot of people, uh, is the reason I think she's a saint and also the reason I think people can connect with her because most of us are not going to be a great missionary and are not going to be martyred but we are going to be called upon to love and to love like Therese did.